Thank you, George. So I think we're going to talk quickly about the role of surgery. Surgery has two potentials. One actually is to prolong survival. And I'm going to show you survival da data that we've collected in patients with neuroendocrine tumors. And the other one is possibly even to cure some patients. And I'm going to focus on three distinct groups of patients. The first one is gastronoma with duodenal, primarily duodenal neuroendocrine tumors, but also pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. And then pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, plus or minus liver metastases, because many patients present with liver metastases. And then ileal neuroendocrine tumors that produce the carcinoid syndrome. So we commonly see patients who present with uh, the carcinoid syndrome, and they usually have liver metastases and a primary tumor in the ileum. So this is a slide of the duodenum, and you can see that this is the duodenum here. Here's the stomach, and this is the head of the pancreas. And I think this slide actually just points out that opening the duodenum is critical to finding duodenal gastronoma. So that's something that we did many years ago. And actually, just a simple maneuver like opening the duodenum at the time of surgery significantly increased the cure rate. So when we did patients prior to opening the duodenum, the cure rate was only about 30%. And then when we did patients subsequent to opening the duodenum, the cure rate was approximately 50%. So basically, just opening the duodenum, we found more neuroendocrine tumors, and we cured more patients. And one of the key elements in gastronomas, as well as other neuroendocrine tumors, is the development of liver metastases. So one of the ways when the tumor is localized, we want to prevent it from spreading to the liver, because we know when it spreads to the liver, then the patients will subsequently die from the tumor. So this is some data in Zollinger-Ellison syndrome, where we showed that surgery was able, removing the primary tumor, was able to avoid the development of liver metastases. And that actually correlates with survival in these studies. In other words, patients, one of the questions with Z patients was, well, we take uh, proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole or pantoprazole, why do surgery at all? Well, the reason why we do surgery is this is potentially a malignant tumor that can spread to the liver and kill the patient. So not only did surgery uh, affect the tumor, but it actually prolonged survival. So the group that got surgery actually did better on longitudinal follow-up than the group who refused to have surgery. So surgery actually has two advantages in these patients. It has a potential cure rate of 50%, and it also avoids the development of metastatic disease to the liver, and thus prolongs survival. So these are patients whom we operate on here at Stanford with more advanced tumors. So these are 46 patients that have a locally advanced tumor in the pancreas plus liver metastases. Not everyone had liver metastases, but many of them did. A lot of them actually had gastronomas, uh, 30 patients. One, two had glucagonomas. So, if we break it down between functional and non-functional, obviously the functional make those type of hormones, it's about 50-50. And about a quarter of these patients had an inherited form of pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors associated with multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1. And these are just some slides to show you the kind of tumors we were doing, uh, dealing with. So here's a tumor here, and as George pointed out, it's hypervascular. And that's the superior mesenteric artery and the superior mesenteric vein. So you can see that half of the superior mesenteric vein is abutting this tumor. And those vessels are real key because they're the blood flow to the entire gut and from the gut to the liver. So it's technologically difficult to take out tumors in this location. And this patient's tumor was even worse. In other words, this patient presented with jaundice, but it was from a neuroendocrine tumor and you can see that the tumor actually is totally encasing this big vein, the superior mesenteric vein or portal vein. So to take this tumor out, we'd have to resect the vein or remove the vein and then reconstruct it surgically. And this is another patient whom we operate on with a glucagonoma. 
His primary tumor was in the tail, but he had this giant liver metastasis in the right lobe, and we were able to not only remove the primary tumor, but remove uh, the liver, uh, the right lobe, at the same time. And this is the final patient, just to show you how some of these patients present. This is a tumor in the duodenum, which is actually in the wall of the duodenum, but this lady also presented with a large uh, tumor in the, in the liver. So for all these patients, actually, it's kind of important to know that if we look at their 10-year survival with this type of aggressive surgery, it was actually 60%. So these patients actually have done fairly well long-term. And if we look at cure rate, in other words, in some of the patients, we can measure markers, whether they have any tumor on imaging and markers. Some of these patients were actually cured. About a third of patients actually had long-term disease-free survival with no other treatment. So surgery had a definite role in these patients. So we can resect locally advanced and metastatic neuroendocrine tumors with acceptable safety. We had no operative deaths and 60% long-term survival and 30% disease-free survival. So finally, I was going to talk about small bowel carcinoid tumors because I see a lot of these patients, they actually present with liver metastases. And the question is, where's the primary tumor? They all, their doctors don't know where it is. No one seems to know where it is. And they usually have a small ileal carcinoid with lymph node metastases. And this diagram shows it pretty well. Excuse me, I screwed up there, good. That was bad, I got it back. This diagram shows it pretty well. You can see that in this area, there's, this is actually the ileum, and here's the colon, here's the appendix. Usually these patients present with a tumor in the distal ileum that actually causes cicatrization or scarring of the intestine. It might present with a bowel obstruction, or sometimes these tumors are occult. No one really sees them, and they present with a large lymph node metastasis right around the same vein, the superior mesenteric vein. And this is what's seen on imaging studies or the somatostatin or octrea scan. So commonly, they actually present even with liver metastases. And here's some examples of this. And I, these are difficult to see, but there's a tumor that's in the wall of the distal ileum with contrast in the ileum. And here's this bulky uh, tumor in lymph nodes near the superior mesenteric vein. So we've actually resected even these tumors, and we, one of the potential complications of surgery, and some of the patients are actually here today, is a short gut syndrome, but we've actually been able to keep at least 100 to 150 centimeters of intestine and manage the relative short gut with different medications, and these patients have actually done fairly well, and at the same time, we've removed the liver metastases. And here's some pathology examples of what it looks like. You can see a ileal carcinoid tumor there, and there's actually another one here. So one of the issues with ileal carcinoid tumors is that they're multiple. In other words, you have to do a fairly big resection because they have multiple primary sites. And this is an example of some of the liver tumors, and this is what, what George showed. You can see this liver resection specimen with many tumors, and Obviously, these patients present with the carcinoid syndrome. So here's data that we, we uh, reported when I was at UCSF with Dr. Bob Warren, who's actually Emily Bergslin's husband. This shows the survival. In other words, if we look at ZE patients, these are patients with liver metastases from Zollinger-Ellison syndrome or from carcinoid syndrome. And a lot of these patients presented. This is six-year follow-up or I mean uh, five-year follow-up, it's actually pretty good. The five-year survival was 75%, and all the Z patients actually survived five years, even though they both presented with liver metastases. Of course, these patients are not necessarily comparable because they're relatively rare patients, and the extent of disease in the liver is different. But it shows you that you can actually do this type of surgery. You can remove many tumors that appear to be inoperable, and patients can still do well, but it requires like judgment and careful planning along with the uh, preoperative studies and working with 
other surgeons, like for example, the vascular surgery was done mostly here by Dr. John Harris and the uh, vascular surgeons at UCSF. So thank you very much. And now we'll get Dr. Uh, Pulsides to talk about laparoscopic approaches to this. Thank you.